Hey everybody, this is Zanaris, and this is going to be the next in my tutorial series that's meant to help you get accustomed to the StarCraft II Galaxy Editor. This video is actually going to cover a couple things that are, in, that are involved with making a map, um, the planning stages, the ideas, the brainstorming, and then we're going to cover terrain basics a little bit. So what I've got on my screen right now is... Uh, this is a mission from StarCraft II Wings of Liberty. Uh, you are able to open these missions in the uh, Galaxy Editor uh, without, you know, any illegitimate hacks or anything. It's just, it's freely available, and I'll go over that later. But I wanted to point out that this is the, uh, this is the Terran mission number one. So, I mean, it's not really a spoiler, because, you know, it's the first mission. And uh, I wanted to outline, you know, look at all the attention to detail and how complicated this is. I mean, it's a pretty simple mission, but when you look at it, you know, it looks very different in the map editor, and you can tell that a lot of work has gone into this. You can tell that even when you play it. So, I, I'm i showing you this because I want you to see that when you make a quality map, um, you want to put a lot of attention to detail, and uh, <laughs> Mickey Mouse with a hat. Um, you also want to... Uh, you know, plan stuff out, you want to make sure you know what the map is, you know, what message, or not message, what theme you want to have, and, uh, you know, balance and whatnot. So, I'm going to go ahead and close this out, and I'm going to show you the ways that I, uh, I go over how I make a map. So, the first thing that I do is I load up Handy Dandy MS Paint. This, this thing is like the original editor. Uh, I, I love this thing. So, what uh, what I do is I sit here and I'll I put the screen black because the white just hurts my eyes staring at it for a while. First, you got to think of what kind of map do you want it to be. Do you want it to be a one versus one, a two versus two, a four versus four? Do you want it to be interchangeable? Some maps are good uh, for both one versus one and versus or two versus two. Okay, so once you figure that out, you want to decide on a theme for the map, and that includes a tile set. So if I open the map editor, you can see you go to new, and I'll show you how to do this in a minute if you can't already tell. Uh, this is what I mean by tile set, your texture set right here. So you can go through and look at the various ones here, and I'll let you do that in your own free time. Um, but, you know, you just need to pick one of these basically. And you want your theme to revolve around whatever tile set you pick, because you don't want to have a Zerg cave on, say... I don't know, um, a Zonaga world ship. I mean, it just doesn't really make sense. Um, you can make it work, but that's just, no. So, anyways, you want to make sure you have a good tile set that's going to match your theme. Um, some themes that I've seen float around are, uh, you know, abandoned Terran bases. Like, uh, for Infernal Arena, I did kind of an abandoned mining expedition. Um, unexplored wilderness, slash lost civilization... Uh, you know, a battle-scarred area, like, you could put, like, a... There's a bunch of mineral doodads in the editor that... They're not mineable minerals, but they look really cool. So, you could make it seem like, you know, the races have been fighting over that area for a while, yada, yada, yada. Basically, just look at the look at the map editor doodads and, uh, see, see what you like. Once you've got the theme worked out, then you want to work on balance and symmetry. Balance, basically you need to take into consideration the abilities of all three races. Um, the first thing that comes to mind, Siege Tanks. Siege Tanks and the Colossus. You want to make sure that you're not putting a whole bunch of ledges everywhere that Terrans can you know, just abuse Siege Tanks left and right, yada yada yada. So, you've got to remember that when you're making a map, you've got to give consideration for balance to all three races. Zergs need uh, open areas for their concave. Um, Terrans, you know, they prefer the ledges and the ramps and the choke points and whatnot. All three races do make good use of choke points, but you've got to be careful with that. So you need to um, make sure you take into consideration symmetry. You want to give the uh, the same opportunities to every player for victory. Um, there's two types of resources in StarCraft II, and uh, you probably think you know what I'm going to say next, but I doubt you know what I'm talking about. Number one, economic resources. Your gas and your minerals and whatnot. Number two, your terrain resources, which are what I talked about a little while ago. Terrain is not quite as important, but is very close to the economic resources, as, you know, 
like I said earlier, a Terran would much rather put his siege tanks on a huge hill and fire from below than to put it down on the same level as the incoming roaches. So take that into consideration when you are making your map. You want to make sure you give the same economic and terrain resources to each player. For the starting area, you need to make sure that there is adequate building placement. You don't want to give the starting position a giant honking field for like 80,000 you know, factories and say go to it. But you also don't want to have room for, you know, two factories and a donut. So you can you can look at other Blizzard maps and other custom maps to kind of get an idea of, you know, what size base you want it to be. Um, and of course, obviously, if you're going to have a shared base, you're going to want to expand the uh, expand the area uh, to make up for each person that's in that shared base area. So um, let's see what else here. I've actually got this handy sheet of notes of stuff I wanted to go over. You want to make sure that you have some expansions on the map. You want some of them to be more accessible than the others. So I'm actually going to bust out the paint here. We'll say shared base, shared base. So, and I realize this map is, you know, totally not feasible, but whatever. So you'll see you've got the minerals. So let's pick uh, red. Here's minerals, <laughs> mad face, and uh, here's some more minerals. So for these players, um, you know what, this, this kind of brings to mind Twilight Fortress. You know how it has the uh, main bases and they've got the minerals right here and the minerals right here. Um, those are easy to defend expansions. And, you know, you've also got the high yield out here and one out here and then some minerals here and here and blah, blah, blah. So the point is... Um, some of these minerals are harder to defend than others. You want to make sure that you've got some that are kind of close to home and also some that are out of reach so you could put some really contested ones like a high yield and a really easy to get at position. Um, a lot of times you'll see them kind of the middle of the map or off to the middle of the map, kind of the same distance from each each starting base. But as far as mineral patches go, I don't recommend putting more than eight per base. Um, I know sometimes you'll see seven. Eh, it's, it's not really something I like to do. I like to go with eight. Um, eight spread around the command center and then two gas geysers. And uh, you're probably not going to want to put high yields in there either. You can if you're kind of making a you know crazy map, sure. But uh, for a standard melee map, you're not going to be throwing high yields everywhere because the economy just gets way out of control too early. So... One thing you want to take into consideration for this is I mentioned your uh, your story earlier, your theme. You don't want to let that get in the way of balance. So, whoa, white box. Um, you don't want to have a whole bunch of doodads laying around on the ground. You know, you've got this fantastic looking, you know, map. And then all of a sudden you realize that, you know, your Terran landing pad with all your military doodads all around are completely blocking off half the expansions. That's just silly. So try to take a minimalistic approach with the doodads. You want to have as few as possible while still maintaining the story and the feel and the theme. So play around with it. You can take a look at other, you know, other maps and kind of get an idea. Um, there's some there's some really good ones on on some of the Blizzard maps. So just check those out. You can actually download the blizzard maps and actually open them in the editor and look around for all that stuff and while while i'm on topic i'm going to say this one more time go into the map editor in your spare time and i'm going to tell you this now so you can get this out of the way i know i did it when i first got the editor open up the map editor press the letter d open up your doodads and just look at them Go through and spend 10, 15 minutes looking, oh, hey, that's what that is. That's what that is. That's what that is. So that way you know what you have to work with, and you know what themes you can come up with, and it'll help you get ideas for the map that you want to make. So there is uh, not... Let me see. I've actually, like I said, i got this sheet of notes here. I'm going to make sure I cover everything first. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it as far as uh, the pre map stuff, you're, you're going to want to use MS Paint. The reason I brought this up is you're going to want to use this to draw out your map ahead of time. It's, it's more of a pain than anything to try to do a whole bunch of map editing in the map editor. Get over here, you know, you've got this great 
you know, base laid out and you've got the terrain over here down set up and 10 minutes into it, you realize it just, it's not going to work. It looks silly. It's goofy. It's imbalanced, etc. So it's a lot easier to do it in the map or the uh, NMS paint. You know, you can save the files. You can take them. Uh, you can email them to yourself. You can look at them while you're at work. Don't tell your boss and get your, get some ideas and whatnot. And you can come home later and, uh, you know, put those ideas on in the editor. So, I am going to close this down now, and we're just going to take a look at terrain editing now. So if you have opened up the map editor, if you haven't rather, go ahead and do so now, and pause this video. Voila, I'm assuming you've unpaused it now. And you probably 